I have a surprise for my big boys. And no, Wizards did not give us a spoiler. I wonder why. But we've got something much better, and that is modern gameplay with the new Oko card from Throne of Eldraine. So in this video, we're going to find out if Oko is in fact playable in modern. So let's read what Oko does. Oko is three mana, comes into play with loyalty four, and his first ability says up to make a food token. What is a food token? A food token is an artifact that says pay two mana, tap it, sack it, and gain three life. The ability is fine. It's, you know, it's kind of whatever. And Oko's last ability is also fine. We can minus five and give our opponent an artifact or creature we control and steal one of the creatures with power three or less. But Oko's most important ability is its middle ability. It says target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a 3-3 elk creature. And this ability does not end at the end of turn. And the ability is not a minus ability. It is a plus ability. That's pretty good. So the question is, how do we break this ability in modern? To answer that question, we have to understand how this ability works. And it's actually a bit complicated because Oko's ability specifically says elk creature. The wording creature means the target will no longer be an artifact, but it can still be legendary or snow. No. But to make things really complicated, let's talk about Flicker Wisp and Spellcaller. Flicker Wisp has an ETB ability that exiles a card and returns it at the end of turn. But notice that it's a single block of text. And that is important because if we hit it with Oko and it's no longer Flicker Wisp, does the exiled card still come back at the end of turn? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. Because this ability is a single block of text, when it entered, the part of the ability that says return the card at the end of turn has technically already become a delayed triggered ability. So no matter what, the card returns at the end of turn. Now compare that to Spellcaller, whose ability is split into two parts. When it enters, it exiles a card, and if Spellcaller leaves the battlefield, the exiled card can be recast. But what happens when you use Oko to turn Spellcaller into an elf? Because this ability is a two-part ability, its second ability will never fire, and the card will be exiled forever. There are a couple other cards out there like Spellcaller, but Wizards caught on to this a while ago, and nowadays we see abilities like this as a single block of text. But that is not the focus of this video, because today we're talking about artifacts. Artifact cards that tend to sit there late game can now all become 3-3 creatures. And even more interestingly, if the targeted creature already has any plus one plus one counters on it, it will continue to have these counters even after it becomes an elk. So in other words, Arcbound Worker would become a 4-4. So today we're testing Oko in two prominent artifact decks in modern, hardened and scales affinity, and traditional affinity. Starting with traditional affinity, it is very explosive early game, but not so great late game. Springleaf Drum tends to sit there, and a step up from that is making it a 3-3. So let's see if Oko helps the deck. So it's time to find out. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a big boy. But now it's time for the gameplay. Opening hand is alright, so we'll keep it. Starting like this, and we'll pass back. Opponent starts with Aether Vial, pull an Ornithopter, play it, and play a Ravager, and then swing for one. And then back to our opponent. Opponent plays a land and passes back, and we'll play a worker, and swing like this. Opponent flashes in a trickster and responds. We'll sacrifice the worker, making this a 4-3. No blocks from our opponent. Opponent goes to 10. Back to them. Opponent plays a Mistbinder, and then they pass back. And we pull a land, so we'll play the Plating. Attaching Plating to Ornithopter. Attacks like this. And opponent vials in the trickster targeting the Ornithopter. So it'll lose flying. In that case, in response, we'll sacrifice these three to the Ravager, making it a 6-6. Six, and then we'll risk it and put the counters on the signal pest. So opponent will take seven down the three and we'll see if they can finish us. Opponent vials in the adept and then concedes. So it's on to the next game. Opening hand, two lands and a good curve, so we'll keep. Starting with Ornithopter and Signal Pest. Opponent starts with the speaker and we pull another Ravager. We'll play the Ravager and then attack them for one. They go to 19, back to them. They play an adept, revealing speaker. Then they swing at us for two, we'll take it. And now it's back to us. Pull a welding jar. We'll then play the jar and a second Ravager. Ravager, and then swing for three. No blocks from our opponent. Back on their turn, they cast Master the Pearl Trident, and a second speaker, and then they'll swing at us for six. So here's what we'll do. Blocks like that, and then sacrifice the Walding Jar. They'll trade, and then we'll put us two counters on the other Ravager. And then back on our turn, we draw another Oko, but no third land. They'll have to play things rather defensively here. We'll play the Worker, and then swing at them for one and pass back. And back on their turn, they cast a second Lord. So it's on to the next one. Opening hand, no lands, but we do have a Mox Opal and a drum, so we'll keep. Three artifacts, play Springleaf, use Springleaf to make a mana, and play a worker. Opponent plays a land, and back on our turn, we draw another drum. Play a drum, but opponent spell pierces, so it gets countered, and might as well swing for one. Opponent's a 19, back to them. Opponent plays a speaker, and passes back. We pull a land, so here's what we'll do. So attempt to cast the Oko. Opponent spell pierces, and then we'll pass back. Opponent plays a Mistbinder, and then swings for three. We'll take it, and it's back to us. We pull a land, so we'll play it, and then play the Ravager. Ravager hits, and then we'll pass back. Opponent plays an image, chopping the Mistbinder, and opponent passes back. Pull a welding jar, we'll play it, and then pass back. Opponent casts Spreading Seas on the Glimmer Void. Opponent attacks like that, blocks like that, sacrificing the worker to the Ravager, making it a 3-3, and it's back to us. Full we'll land, we'll play the land, and might as well swing at the Ravager. Opponent plays a Trickster, targeting the Ravager. So our opponent's got this game, and now it's on to the next one. Opening hand, we can dump our hand this turn, aside from Oko, so yeah, we'll try it. Starting like that. Opponent plays a Speaker, and we pull a Mem Knight. So we'll play the second Mem 
knight, hit them for two, and now it's back to them. They play Silvergill, and then hit us for two, and no third land, but we do pull an Overseer. We swing at them for three, down to 15, and then we play the Overseer. Back to them. They cast Master of the Pearl Trident, swinging at us for six. We'll block and then use a Welding Jar to keep it alive. We go to 14, and they finish up with a Vile, and once again, no third land. So I think we're starting to see a pattern here. I thought that with the Spring Leafs and the Opals in the deck, getting the three mana wouldn't be so tough, but apparently it is, because we haven't been able to get to Oko. So I think the verdict is in. For traditional affinity, Oko main deck is not really working. Maybe it's a sideboard card, or maybe we just need to put more lands in the deck. So maybe not the best fit for Oko. So traditional affinity, not so great. But perhaps Hardened Scales can be a bit better. It has 20 lands instead of 17, and Oko has plenty of relevant targets. So now it's time to see if Hardened Scales can do better. Opening hand is really good. And we can even play the Mox Opal this turn, so we'll keep. And then we'll play Ancient Stirrings. And five cards to choose from here, with Ballista seeming the most logical. Fabulous turn one, but now we'll see what our opponent's got. And opponent starts with Goblin Guide, swings in. We'll take two damage with Ballista on top. And hooray, because now we get to play Oko, turning the worker into a 4-4 elf. But we'll keep it to block to protect Oko. Back to our opponent. Opponent plays an Eidolon, but then passes back. And back on our turn, we pull Hardened Scales. But Opal can't activate this turn unless we make another artifact, because technically worker is not an artifact anymore, it's an elf. So we'll make an artifact food token with Oko. And because it's an artifact, we can now use Opal. Playing Hardened Scales and a Ballista. We'll then swing for four. No blocks from our opponent. We're both at 14. Now back to them. But then nothing from our opponent and they pass back. We pull a land. And let's try this. Turn the food token into an elk. Mission accomplished. And now attacks like this. And they block with the Eidolon on the Ballista. I assume they have a bolt here, but we'll attempt to pump it up to four. And indeed, before it can go through, they play a bolt. And before the bolt goes through, we'll remove the two counters and ping the Goblin Guide for two. Opponent takes seven down the five. And now it's back to them. Opponent plays a land and Searing Blade. Blaze, killing the food token, but in the process they go down to three. But we should get it here. Turn the opal into a creature, swing in for seven, and even if they block, that will be lethal. So there's the game. I have to say, Oko did pretty well there. It was pretty lucky for us to get it on turn two, but good job, Oko. And now on to the next game. Opening hand, a bit too risky, so we're gonna have to mull. And this hand is definitely keepable, but we gotta put one back. Since we only have colorless, we should probably put back Oko, but for the sake of the video, I'll put back a ballista instead. Starting with the module, and our opponent's swings in for two. Worker on top. And then back on our turn. We'll play a worker and make a servo. And then back to our opponent. Opponent swings in for two and plays a searing blaze, killing the servo. We draw a land and go down to 13. We draw a second module. And now we'll play both workers, making one servo. And then just pass it back to our opponent. Our opponent plays a monastery and a goblin guide, swinging with all three, with one land open. They're looking really good here. But we'll double block one of the goblin guides. We go down to nine and attempt to put one counter on each. And in response, our opponent bolts. This worker will die as well. And our servo will get two counters. We're in a pretty bad position here, but I guess draw a card. Ancient stirrings? Nope. I think our opponent's got it. Oh boy, our opponent swings in with four creatures and suspends a rift bolt. With a second ancient stirrings on top and no green to play it, we can't come back from this, so we gotta concede. Dang. But it's on to the next game. Opening hand, we got some land stuff, we got this stuff, so we'll keep it. So it's time to dump. And then animation module. And a worker, and with that, we'll pass the turn back. And opponent swings at us with goblin guy. Hardened scales on top of library, so we'll take it. Okay, we'll swing in with the worker, and then play a scales, and then back to our opponent. Opponent swings for three, arcbound worker on top. We have to take it, and then they play Scare the Critic, so we go to 12. So we might as well play the worker. It comes in as a 2-2, and we'll make a servo, and then pass by. And our opponent's searing blazes on worker and us. That's gonna be tough. All right, we'll let it die. Opponent attacks, hanger back walker on top, so blocks like that, and then might as well sacrifice a jar to regenerate the token. Then back on our turn, we'll swing in for four. They go to 11, and then play down hair back walker to chump block back to them interesting opponent plays a canyon then passes back how interesting well we pull a ravager so we'll play it our life's so low that i think we gotta go for it here attacks like this blocks like that yeah that's tough so here's what we'll do we'll sacrifice the worker to the ravager sacrificing the worker makes ravager a 4-4 and we'll attempt to put the four counters from the worker on the hanger back and in response our opponent lightning helix is the walker hmm. before the life gain goes through let's sacrifice the walker making two thopters and then we'll go all in on the servo sacrificing everything. Ravager becomes a 14-14, sacrificing itself to put those counters on the servo. And our opponent concedes, so we got lucky they didn't have extra removal in hand, but a win's a win. Opening hand, not really that great. We don't have any green for hardened scales, so we're gonna have to mull. This hand's a bit better, yeah. So we'll keep it in bottom of walker, starting like that, and pass back. Opponent plays monastery and attacks us for one. We take it, and we pull another Oko. So we'll hit them for one, and then put out an Overseer and pass back. And then Searing Blaze on the Overseer. And then they hit us down to 14. We pull an opal, which means we can play Oko this turn.
turn tap opal and then another opal then colorless and then oko turning citadel into a creature and i think the best move here is just to attack with both hit them for four yeah and we'll see if our opponent wants to try and kill oko it'll soak up a lot of damage though and a searing blaze okay opponent hits us for two more suspends rift bolt and it's back to us and nice we pull another land so here's what we'll do we'll make a food token and since the food token is an artifact we'll tap opal to crack it now gaining three life back to 12 and we'll hit them for one and then rift bolt comes down we go to nine and a helix and a lava spike to bump monastery up to three so unfortunately we lose here a bit of a misplay on my part because we didn't have to crack the food token there or attack so for the sake of playing things out let's do a what if scenario let's pretend like we didn't attack workers untap will now block the monastery so we survive and we'll put the counter on the nexus so it goes back to our turn pull a hanger back but assuming they have a bolt in hand let's just make a food token and sack it this turn so we go to six and we'll pass it back when it plays a bloodstain mire cracks it for a mountain sacking to draw a card and a lightning helix so we go to three and then monastery hits us down to one pull land that's pretty good play the hanger back and when we make a food token here we'll be able to activate opal to gain three life and that's what we'll do going up to four and back to them they bolt us down to one and a helix so that's game Oko did a lot there but we never had the chance of going on the offensive if it weren't burn it'd be a lot easier to do that but against aggro matches yeah it was a little bit weird so what do we make of these results honestly i didn't think oko was that good at least not in the main deck in the scales deck it did okay but considering that we are on the play every game i expected the results to be better for both scales and affinity it just seemed like oko slowed down the deck overall so i don't think main deck oko goes in either deck but i could see it being a sideboard card it would be really good if the games went long against a control deck or even better a prison deck so i expect to see oko in some affinity sideboards scales on the other hand oko could work in the sideboard as well but then scales really has to warp their mana base to do that because right now they're mono green and to go blue green just for a sideboard card it's a little iffy but that does not mean that oko doesn't work in other decks so we won't forget about oko we'll have to try it in a different deck but that is all for now let me know what you thought about this video i know the gameplay was a bit difficult to follow but for unreleased cards our options are limited but still comment and let me know what you liked and didn't like and as always i hope you have a great day